So take a look at my radio right now. Hey guys, this is Blackbolt. Hope everyone is doing well. In this video, we're going to be talking about maintenance costs for my Chevy Bolt EV. And as you can see, the radio turned on there. Um, the major issue that I've had with this car, and I knew this when I bought it, is that my radio was finicky and it doesn't always turn on. And when I went to Chevy um, back before I hit 50,000 miles and my warranty ran out, basically that radio was not covered. It was covered under the 36,000 mile warranty. And so they were going to charge me over a hundred bucks to do a diagnosis. And then if they figured it out, they said that they would charge me another thousand to two thousand dollars to replace the radio so i opted to not have that fixed so i just drive it the way it is and as you can see the radio still works it just sometimes it doesn't turn on and i have to do a hard reset on it as i am driving so one of the downsides of my radio not working a hundred percent is that i do not have access to android auto or to apple carplay and I did try to change out the USB connections in the center console and the, the new one also didn't work so I just decided that I would go without those two even though I think it would be really valuable to have Android Auto especially since I use the GPS on a daily basis. We bought our 2017 Chevy Bolt EV Premier on July 31st, 2019 and to date we have spent $2,108.81 on maintenance items and we bought the car with approximately 49,000 miles and as of today, July 3rd, 2021, we have 135,000 miles so that's a total of 86,000 miles driven. The very first thing that I had to do when I got the car was my rideshare inspection. So on August 1st, 2019, I went to Midas and got my inspection done. And that cost $38.48 and that allowed me to start using the car for Uber and Lyft. And that was the only maintenance item that I had for 2019. In 2020, um, the first car specific expense that I had was getting my registration renewed and I got that done on June 15th of 2020 and that cost $427.75. Then in July 2020 I noticed things getting really interesting especially when it rained sometimes my um, ABS system and my um, traction control would suddenly turn off and that was actually pretty dangerous because I'd be barreling down the highway at 60 miles an hour and when they shut off um, because I drive in L mode, the car would suddenly break, and so I had to get that taken care of. And so on July 10th, I went to Midas and had my car inspected, and what they found was that the left front wheel bearing was excessively loose, and um, it was pretty much destroyed, and then I also needed a new wheel speed sensor, and so that was what was causing my issues with the car jerking around. Also, the ABS harness was damaged, so whenever this issue would come up, I would be driving around without my anti-lock braking system, which as you guys know is very dangerous. I got this very impressive estimate from Midas. Um, the front wheel bearing cost $295.99 and then labor was $181.35. And then the wheel speed sensor was $29.99 with $27.90 and then there was $35 for um, the lift inspection, which was going to be due later that month anyway. So I put down a $60 deposit so that they would order the parts that were needed, and then the diagnosis itself cost $118.30. I went back on July 14th and dropped off the car, and Midas did a pretty good job and handled it pretty quickly. So in total, this repair cost $802.85, broken down as the $60 deposit, $118.30 for the diagnosis, and then the repair itself of the left front wheel bearing and the speed sensor was $624.55.
And with that repair done, Midas also included the um, Lyft and Uber inspection for the next 12 month period. Now we are approaching the center of Ramsey from the west hand side and um, the next maintenance item that we needed to do after having the wheel speed sensor replaced was new tires and I bought my tires from Walmart. I run um, Waterfall Equidynamic tires, they're 215.50 R1795 and they cost $214.99 for four tires and then the installation was $74.60 and I ordered the tires on September 7th 2020 and had them installed on September 20th of 2020. So we are approaching the center of Ramsey and you can see it's lined with flags for Independence Day coming up. Between September of 2020 and April of 2021, I did not have any maintenance items to do. And then one thing that I didn't mention earlier was the alignment on my car was really bad. And that's not something that was addressed um, when I took the car to Midas for whatever reason. But in April, on April 20th, 2021, I got a cabin air filter that was $21.08. And then I had to get a new set of tires on April 21st. I ordered um, Waterfall Ecodynamic tires, the same as before, for $102. And the installation was on April 29th, also at Walmart, and that was $27. And that was just on the front tires. And then on April 29th, I went to Honest One Auto Care, which is in Anoka, Minnesota, and they performed an alignment for $109.99, and my car has been driving like a charm ever since. And finally, on June 4th of 2021, I had to get a new renewal done for my registration, and that cost $375.25. So guys, through 23 months and 86,000 miles of ownership, I've spent, very generously speaking, $2,218.80 on maintenance. $803 of that was just renewing my Minnesota registration. So if you take that out, then my maintenance is $1,415.80. Of that 1400 about half of it was the issue that I had with my ABS and wheel speed sensor. So that's a legitimate expense. And the other half of that was tires. So those are just maintenance items that you'd have to do on any car that you own along with the registration. So overall, around $700 worth of actual legitimate maintenance items that I've had to do on my Chevy Bolt EV. I think that's a pretty good deal. So guys, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. And happy Independence Weekend to all of the American viewers. And I hope and I pray that you are all doing well. And we'll see you soon.